guys it's leaflet and today we'll be doing a guide the top 10 things i wish i knew about grand blue fantasy i've played it a lot <laughs> i've played it i've played it a little, little much so first off we'll be talking about what i think is the most important this is the most important thing first we'll go into combat this is our combat tips number one this is actually the most important combat tip in the game and that is to option select your perfect dodge so what do i mean by that so rather than just dodging when you're trying to dodge the enemy that's what happens when you just try the regular perfect dodge okay so what is a option select perfect dodge so instead of just dodging what you're gonna do is you're gonna press block and then dodge and the reason why you do this is because it basically will block if you dodge too late see i took zero damage even though i didn't perfect dodge it it's really it's really easy to do you just tap tap dodge i mean tap block and then dodge tap block and then dodge tap block and then dodge that's it this will save you from almost everything in the game it's actually crazy oh i forgot i should probably say that that guard is op so basically by doing this you are doubling like your defense and the only time you're gonna get hit is if you dodge too early and it's really really good see how i do see how i guarded instead of dodge perfect dodge and that's because i threw the guard out first and it's really really good and it's free basically you also can do it by just holding guard you can just hold the guard button uh as long as you have guard it's so like yeah I'll, I'll let this guy jump on me see you can hold the guard while dodging and what that does is again it blocks it blocks and dodges at the same time see how dude i got saved there from the the the, the block cancel thing all right next i'm gonna talk about guard cancel okay so how do you do a guard cancel so if you're doing a combo it will do like this combo and some enemies like this guy right here likes to run away from you look at this you see this punk he likes to run away from you so what you can do to pin him down is to just do this and you do that by pressing block after your attack and you just pin them down and they can't leave and I love doing this on small enemies. See, like you just grab this guy and you just keep him there. And you can also do this like just in general. If you just need like a couple hits of damage. It's not great though for like, you don't want to do this for damage really. So tip number three, watching your links, watching your links to refresh mechanics. So, say I have, uh, let me just, here we go. Stun. I use my mechanic, I dump it, and then I link. Because it always refreshes your pets. And you want to do this with every character. If you have a resource that is replenished by link, dump it. And then get, and then dump it, and then get them back. Always. There we go. Tip number four. During SBA, hold it during chain chance. Wait till the very end. Gives maximum stun on the enemy. Because if, if you wait until the end, and everyone waits until the end, your entire team has more time to DPS. Next, tip. Tip number six. It was five, sorry, five. God. Tip number five that, like, I wish I knew. Things I wish I knew about Grand Blue Fantasy. Tip number five is do not this is very important this is actually just as important as tip number one do not unlock characters that you do not want to immediately play if there's care don't don't unlock characters for the sake of unlocking them only when you're ready to play them either play them or add them to your team two reasons reason number one they always start at a level that's kind of equivalent to your level which caps at 60. so if you wait till the end of the game to unlock them then you will have a level 60 character that has over 50% of their masteries already filled. Here's the really important, important part. That other one is actually not that big a deal. The, the important thing is when you defeat Proud Bahamut, Pro Proto Bahamut will only drop weapons for characters you already have. So if you lower that, if you buy more characters, you're increasing the pool 
which makes it less likely for you to get the, the weapon for your main. So that's why. It's a very important one because it will always drop a weapon for a character you have unlocked. So if you unlock all of them, now you have a huge pool. Yeah, mega oof. Uh, tip number six, Potion Hoarder is OP. Potion Hoarder is OP. If you are having trouble in raids, Potion Hoarder, hoarder is a way for you to protect yourself and heal yourself. Potion Hoarder at level 15, which you can get from a five sigil being maxed, will give you plus three green potions, plus five blues, plus five mega potions, which full you to uh, heal you to full, and revival potions plus two, giving you three. So you have three revives if you mess up. It's just, it's so strong. It is so strong. So for an anyone struggling with the game, Potion Hoarder is an easy way to give you an easier time. Tip number seven, always level up all of the weapons because their passives apply. So as you see, I bought all of the weapons on EO. I don't have all of them leveled yet because it costs a lot, but these weapons have passives in your masteries right here. And all of these passives apply. All of these, all are active after you unlock them with masteries. It doesn't matter if you're wielding the weapon or not, you will always have these. So always buy these because they're really cheap. Tip number eight. Sierra's transmutation shop is upgraded after Proud and can drop five plus sigils. So um, if you want, you can hold your knickknack vou vouchers because they're kind of wasted until later on. You can get five. It gets upgraded so that you can get five plus. So five plus are the end game sigils, which you can use to transmit right here from level three. And you can it can drop five pluses. It's just really rare, but it can drop them. So do note that they do drop. Tip number nine, farming spots and how to level sigils. Uh, farming mastery, so we're just going to tell you real quick. How to farm masteries. There's two ways. So this is the baby way to farm masteries. So you go back to Folka, and this guy right here has a quest. And this quest gives you 700 mastery points, and all it costs is five shards of earth and fire. And you can talk to this guy over here. And they're always up, by the way. These guys are always up, and all you do have to do is do a quest, and it will reset them. This is the other one. And this one gives you wind and water. So make sure that that's how you can get 700. You can get 1.4 thousand per run. La lastly, uh, let me show you um, uh, other farming spots. So the other farming spots are here. This is like end game farming. Oh, there we go. Maniac. I'm dumb. Uh, Slimepeed. <clears throat> Maniac Slimepeed is the best place to get uh, mastery points afterwards. Uh, a lot of them, just, they just drop mastery points. Also gets you gold. Uh, also gets you gold. And one important thing is that it has a chance to spawn a slime, uh, a rainbow slime. And if you see that rainbow slime, kill it immediately because it drops uh, a bunch of really good items. Uh, some of the items that it can drop. And it will always drop multiple, by the way. It doesn't drop one. You can get these items from the rainbow slime. And the rainbow slime, it does not spawn often. Like, to be honest, it's kind of rare. But uh, the good thing about it is it's just really good. It's just it's just really, really good treasure. Uh, so you get this from them. Azurite Splendor. These Azurite Splendor will level a sigil to its maximum. And you use those at the blacksmith. You just go to the blacksmith and you switch the mode to Azurite Splendor when you're upgrading, and it will automatically take it to, to, to 15 by using these. So you don't have to worry about leveling sigils with these on you. Uh, Damascus ingots can be used to unbreak weapons, and it's best used uh, from level 125 to 150. It does not work on Awakening. So again, you cannot use Damascus for Awakening, so use them to unbreak 125, level 125 to 150. So the 125 unbreak is what you want for that. Um, and it also drops another thing called uh, Ambrosia, which you can use for just a ton of mastery points. Does anybody know how many, how many you get from Ambrosia? It's a lot. 15,000 mastery points from one Ambrosia. So that's why the slimes are the best. Okay. Uh, lastly, and this is another, again, we're ending on a very important tip. And that is simply that guard is OP. If you're in doubt fighting a boss, 
always guard. Because if you don't know if the boss is doing something spooky, just guard. See? You just block. If you're ever in doubt, like, oh, I don't know what the hell this boss is doing. Just block and dodge. Block and dodge. Because you can block, you can dodge while you're blocking. There we go. <laughs> Best place to farm vouchers? Uh, honestly, just doing any, any quest and then... So slime... If you want to, if you want to also farm sigils, sigil exp slightly, you also want to do slimes because slimes can drop like two hundred vouchers. But uh, honestly, just selling stuff is the best. Your best shot. Uh, selling stuff, rolling the gacha, and then reselling what you get from the gacha back to the gacha. We did this live on stream. I stream on Twitch.tv slash Leaflet. And I play a lot of Grand Blue. Crap on. See you later. Real quick, would you say that the fact that you can't skip the anim animation? is completely unbelievable like only only show if it's like really good or new <laughs> otherwise let me just mash